set. It looks quite big, I think, on screen, but, well, <laughs> for a baby it looks big to me. But that's fine, I don't know how big a baby is meant to be. It'll be how big it is. This is meant to be for a six month baby. I think I'm going to put these buttons on, which are bright orangey red. They're super, super cute. And I think they give it that little bit of a vintagey fun feel. That's what I want. I want some fun. And we've got a lot of colour through the print. And then today I'm going to make the corresponding outfit with the blue gingham. And I'm thinking for that one, I'll maybe do these beautiful clear buttons let's see how they look once the other one's done so a little bit of sewing today and i'll see if i can get those buttonholes done as well not my favorite task <laughs> whatsoever anyway that has been a really fun project so i'm looking forward to doing that second one today you're so cute i'm just gonna thread in a bit of elastic in the tiny gingham pants are they? I've just overlocked inside. Even the leg holes. Um, yeah, it's a fun little make. Very fun indeed. And um, yeah, I think I'm going to be going back to work in the next few days, only temporarily. But I think next week, I'm going to be going back to London anyway. Um, so we'll see. I did actually already go to London once. I finished, I finished working in whenever the first lockdown was in spring. And um, I, God, how long was that then? That was seven months. Oh, yeah, seven months, and um, and then I was called back to work beginning of November, so I got the train back, prepped everything, made sure I was ready for work, and then the day that I got back to London, I was having dinner with my dad, because I stay with him, and um, absolutely hilariously, that was the day that they announced the next lockdown, which was meant to start on the day that I was meant to be back at work. I mean, that's just so funny, isn't it? <laughs> so I've technically started work once already. Anyway, so let's see. That gives me a few more days of vlogging anyway. Uh, there's a couple of little projects I'd like to do. I think I want to make some gingerbread tomorrow. I really like the decorating. <laughs> and I bought the silver ball bearings, so that'll be fun. Anyway, yeah, oh, I've got to do the buttonholes of these little blouses, and that is most certainly the worst part. I think domestic machines are not that reliable when it comes to buttonholes, in my experience. But then, if I do them in a working capacity and need to add them, we use industrial machines and it's really really different using an industrial machine that only has one function like the buttonhole machine that's all it does compared to just my little um, domestic ordinary machine <sighs> yeah never mind you work with what you got don't you no point crying over it and as much as I would love to have special machines for absolutely everything, not going to happen. I mean, I already have one industrial sewing machine, one domestic sewing machine and a domestic overlocker. Oh gosh, look at that doll's face. Isn't that terrifying? Sandra. People think you're creepy. She usually sits on this bookshelf on top of my writing desk at the little slope that I used the other day, but that's downstairs. Because so you cannot write so many Christmas cards all at once. You need to pace yourself <laughs> in order to write a nice, meaningful message. Otherwise, you would just, if you just wanted to write 
to whoever from whoever. Obviously, you could write them all in one go. Anyway, sometimes I find her facing back to front on the bookshelf because <laughs> I don't... I think Jason might find her a bit creepy in the evenings when he's sat up here on his own. Dolls don't creep me out at all. Actually, when I've made... I've made dolls before and you embroider the faces and that's quite a nice project to travel with because it's quite small and you just, you're just embroidering on a small... just the head. Sometimes the head and the body is one. Anyway, if I'm ever on a train embroidering the face of a doll, women will walk past and they'll see it's a doll and they'll kind of give like a sweet smile and they'll walk past and, you know, they'll, there's some kind of, um, I don't know, like a sweet, like happy feeling. You see a man look at the doll with horror as they walk past. They do like a double, triple check and then scurry away. <laughs> don't know what it is, boys and dolls. What? Guess maybe some girls as well. Oh, I've got my Populux on today. This is such a cool cardigan. I really like it, but I can only do it up to here. Then I can't do it up here anymore. It doesn't fit my middle. A little bit tighter on the elastic. It didn't say how too tight to do the elastic on the pattern, so I had to look online and Google um, waist measurement of a six-month-old child anyway trusted google told me can't remember what it said now 18 inches or something oh there we go i have finished the other little blouse have a look that's the little set i'm thinking the mix and match so we got the the little birdies with the gingham the little gingham collar and then I was thinking these buttons I did also pull out oh these like oh I lost one <laughs> I've got three of these that I could also use and they may be oh I don't know I've got way more of these red I think I've got five of the red but you know, we wear a vest under anyway, and it doesn't really need to be buttoned all the way. Anyway, I really like the mix and match. I think it's more modern and fun. Oh, this is, I think this is my favourite with the red buttons. It looks a little bit, I don't want to say, like clownish in a way. Like Raggedy Ann and Andy. Like, I don't know. Just love it. Love it, and I love these birdies. And... Kind of from far away you just get that gentle dusty rose but then when you come up close you see actually that it's a lot of fun with that print oh what to do with those bonds these are just calling to me they're so beautiful i don't know if you can see on screen but they're like magical they because of the the cuts on the underneath where it catches the light it just like sparkles so it doesn't come across nicely on screen, but in person, they look lovely. But then that blue has an element of fun. See, I'm paralysed with decisions of colour. I can make decisions on shape and fit and other things super easily, but when it comes to colour, I think I'm going to have to go with that. My, my soul is calling to these buttons. As much as your soul can call to a button. I have to do the buttonholes. Oh, maybe I should do that tomorrow. That'll give me a sense of purpose and then they'll be done. The pants are done. Oh, I do. Maybe I'll just finish these off today. And then what time are we? Uh, oh, no, can't see. Four o'clock. Four o'clock, near dinner time. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Nope, I have decided. Let's do the buttonholes. Let's get this done. So I need the foot and the button and I think that's it for now. Tidied up a little bit, just a little bit. Oh, there's all the beautiful patterns. Just got them there waiting. 
There you go, it's very slippery when you put them in the plastic. <laughs> okay, this is the machine that I use for the buttonholes. I got this machine because it's a decor machine, which means um, that it's got a stronger motor, I believe, because it's for decor. So furniture, so weight fabrics, like um, um, cushions and um, curtains. That's what I was told in the shop. And it has for the buttonholes three different types. So those are more kind of the coat style. Mm, those are shirts. But that one is actually very sweet with the rounded. Thing is, I, actually, I can't do coat buttonholes. I've tried and it just makes a mess. And it's almost digital. I mean... <laughs> It kind of, it gives you a number that's as, as digital as it gets. And then you can pick the speed. Um, but seeing as it's a buttonhole, let's just go slowly because sometimes it gets mad. All right, let's do a couple. Let's get this going. Right, let's see if I can remember. I've got the uh, doodah on and I did put the button in to measure. I took the button out and then I went a squidgen tighter. Like, just a little bit tighter. It's all a bit fluffy in there. Um, and then... Seven? Seven. For number seven, you need the R foot. That's the R foot. <sighs> Who knows? <laughs> I very, very rarely ever use this machine. So let's see what happens. I think just push. Oh, 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 oh. Something's happening. Oh, it don't look good. Does it look good? Told you she hates me this machine. Why you hate me so? Why you hate me so not my machine? fault. You got to do the thingamajig with the thingamajig. Okay. Now now come on. Oh, oh, oh. all those buttonholes and now I just need to trim the threads and cut them open with my special oh, let me reach over and get them these are my buttonhole scissors who are these by? oh they're Japanese ones I never spent so much on a piece of kit as I did these scissors I remember that Kai? Called by. Anyway, they are vicious. They are so unbelievably sharp. Look at that. Look at that. So sharp. But you can really get a nice, nicely snipped button. So that needs tidying. And then tonight I can stitch on some buttons. Yippee.